Hello and welcome to the Invisible Hand Show Live. I'm Lydia Glider Shelley. However, I'm not going to be visible today for personal reasons. I'm hoping Larry will show up soon to take over the show because frankly I'm really not up to it tonight, but I'd still like to welcome anybody who's listening and anyone who pops in while I'm speaking right now. Um, we are indebted to Michael Shanklin and the Voluntary Virtues Network for providing this platform so that we can talk about this new economic system that we believe in so much. And we really appreciate you coming to listen to us. I am not prepared, I must admit. This has been a topsy-turvy week for me. But maybe that's where I should start then until Larry arrives, is talking about how if the system that we promote were in place, this week would not have been the disaster it was because people would just not behave the way that they do. There would be no good reason for it. Um, when people live together, there's bound to be some issues. Hi, Jason. Hello. Well, it's nice to see someone show up, and I can hear you and everything. Yay! Awesome. Oh, I spoke too soon. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Can you, can you not, hear me? You're not driving while you talk to me, are you? <laughs> I am in the car, but I'm not driving. That's good to know. It's a little scary to think you're going to be on the show while you're driving. <laughs> I, I just need to go down the street to get something real quick. And um, so I would, if I do drive, it won't be really far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just talking about how when in, in the system that we promote, people would have every advantage if they are kind and treat each other well, but they would have plenty of incentive not to treat each other poorly and to be mean to each other or to trigger personalities that have issues. Like, for example, if you have PTSD and somebody sets off firecrackers just to laugh at your reaction, that would definitely be frowned upon under the system that we promote and the person providing those firecrackers would be held responsible in the end. What do you think of that? That's very interesting. You know what? I I, I thought about that issue uh, reading the book where you think about people being held responsible for the things that they, it was more pertaining to the selling of guns. Um, and I didn't really think about how many, how that applies to everything else, but that's, that's a very interesting concept. And, but uh, yeah, um, in a libertarian society, it's about personal responsibility and taking that personal responsibility is taking the next step and actually being responsible for the things that you might sell and not being, um, not being aware or even caring about the reputation of the person that you're selling it to. Right, so how do you deal with that? I mean, there's a fine line there between um, being personally responsible and how far that responsibility goes. I'm sorry, what was the question? Well, you know, for example, with the gun, uh, the, the, the line there between um, just being personally responsible and selling the gun as to how far that goes. Um, I sell the gun to Jack, and Jack uh, ends up saving someone's life. So in that case, I end up with a reward, and maybe for life I get a little bit extra in my income. However, I sell the gun, 
to Jerry, and Jerry goes and robs a liquor store, or worse, kills somebody. Uh, mm -hmm. Naturally, the opposite. My income would be significantly reduced, possibly for the rest of my life in the case of the murder. You think so? Is, is that really the way it is? In, in, no, in that, that with is the free market money? That's the way we think it would work. But to be honest with you, once it's actually developed and and the framework is there through the programmers that will need to make it happen, uh, it's really up to the all of the people involved, all of the payers, all of the people, the voters, the programmers. Everyone has to come together and agree on things. So it, it, there will probably be some. Um, issues during the transition, obviously, but in the long run, yes. And when it comes to guns and being personally responsible, um, it's not just a matter of background checks in this case. With the new system, if we had everyone's reputation uh, logged and easily checked, it, it wouldn't be hard to tell that, that Jerry might not be the best person to sell a gun to. So it's not like you would not be forewarned. Right. So yeah, then I guess in that case, yeah, I I I I I like the idea of, of holding the of the the accountability. The accountability being there and being able to hold the customer accountable to their to um to being that if you sell them a gun, yeah, you can actually check their records. You can actually it's um, deny selling it to them if they deny you uh, access to those records. Um, but I guess it's really up to you, and um, and I guess that kind of puts that um, that extra sense back back in the back of your head, like I'm, it's my reputation on the line if I sell to this person. Exactly, because yeah. eventually, you know, everybody's going to look at you, the gun dealer, and your reputation. Right. And how many guns you've sold to people who have saved lives as opposed to how many people you've sold guns to that right. end up causing a problem. Right. And so, yeah, you take those questions into account, and, and, and there's, a, there's a plus and minus. And naturally, things are going to happen. Accidents are going to happen where some people are just going to go nuts. And, 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 and shoot up and you shouldn't really be held responsible for that but I think your overall in your career when you've done more good than you've done harm I think hello Larry how's it going ah oh, hey Rocky you can tell by how late I am getting on here <laughs> I need definite more documentation as to what I'm supposed to be doing but at least apparently I'm on here yay, <laughs> yay can you hear it can you hear us this time? I can hear you and somebody else. Ah, <laughs> we can all hear each other. We're we're making progress week by week. It's baby steps, but yay! Good, good for us. Have we started the conversation yet? Yeah, we were talking about um, guns and responsibility and um, being responsible for selling the guns and having your reputation connected to who you sell your guns to. I like that. It sounds like a good idea. Would that it would happen. Huh? I, I said, I like that. I think it's a great idea. I wish it would happen. I wish it would happen, yeah. <laughs> yeah if if, if so, the people who manufacture guns and who sell guns and who distribute guns <clears throat> had to um, be responsible for the actions that were taken using those guns, I think we'd see a lot fewer guns and a lot more... Uh, what would you call it, uh, more responsible behavior on the part of gun owners. Yeah, and gun sellers as well. Oh, yes, and the people who sell things to the gun sellers. Right, because... But under the current, under, the way that the world is set up now, obviously it will be much more difficult to do that because you can't just call up a person's reputation for one thing. For another, the laws would re would would end up penalizing you for discriminating against someone in such a fashion. Uh, in the current setup, with, with physical object money, you are correct. 
But, of course, uh, with non-physical object money, there's no law to penalize you. It's all based on the consequences of your actions. And that is what we do not have, of course, with physical object money. With physical object money, once you've sold it, you, you've lost all responsibility for it. Uh, well, with a few exceptions, as in the case of selling cigarettes to minors or alcohol to minors. And uh, <clears throat> if I recall correctly from the cowboy movies I saw as a child, if you sold guns to the Native Americans, you were, uh, you were frowned upon as well. I'm curious, what in the, for example here, after the transition and we're in the, uh, free market money or the non-physical object money, non profit right. uh, say a pharmaceutical company has made a, oh, they got, there's a bottle of a thousand Oxycontin or one of those really dangerous painkillers and it gets stolen. Yes. And on the street, people OD and die and so forth. How far back, uh, who, who's going to be respo held responsible for that? Um, it goes back all the way. All the way to the manufacturer, all the way to the people who provided ingredients for those. All the way back to the first grade teacher or the executive that worked in the drug company. It goes all the way back as far as it can the go. first grade teacher. Now it's starting to sound like North Korea. <laughs> no, again, the first grade teacher uh, would perhaps have gotten two or three cents more income if that if the if no one had died as a result of uh, the oxycontin getting out into the public without uh, without an irresponsible person possessing it. Well, you're talking about some serious programming there to to keep track of everyone in the chain like that. We've already got. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I got, I got a new face to these darling. <laughs> I'll mute me. I'm going to mute. Oh, there we go. He's muted. <laughs> Why would you want to mute Jason? He's doing fine. I don't want him to uh, participate in the conversation until he puts the car in park. Oh, I'm sorry. In any event, we already keep track of those things. We know who was your first grade teacher. Oh, by the way, he can unmute himself when he's ready. I can't, <laughs> okay. I can't unmute him now if I wanted to. Uh, we we uh, already have all the records. We, we keep track of these things. We know who everybody's first grade teacher was. We know. Okay, well, what about mine? Mine's already dead. What if I did something now? It wouldn't affect her then, right? No, it wouldn't affect her at all. Because, <laughs> as you say, she's already dead. <laughs> I would imagine my first grade teacher is already dead, too. Well, if she's okay. not. She's pretty darn old, eh? We already have all this information. It's, it already exists. And it's relatively simple for computers to trace these things all the way back. Once you have the uh, data on file, and I guess, we've got I guess it. you're right. It's a simple script uh, in most cases for yes. stuff like that. Once it's all interconnected properly in the right databases. So uh, the teacher, uh, and the first grade teacher teaches Johnny to read. Okay, that's on the record. Uh, and the um, proportion of Johnny's income that will go to that teacher is decided upon. Once that proportion is decided upon, it never has to be, you know, everything that, all the money that, that Johnny earns in, in later life, automatically that tiny amount or some some proportion, I don't know whether it be tiny or not, but some uh, proportion of that would also go to that first grade teacher that taught Johnny to read. So it, it's really very simple as far as the programming is concerned once a set of decisions are made. So, again, the responsibility has to go all the way back because you don't want anybody doing something irresponsibly. A lot of people are going to ha be uncomfortable with that because it's so hard to predict what a first grader is going to grow up and do. That's right, it is. That means that it would be very lucrative. You'd earn a lot of money by figuring out ways to tell, wouldn't you? In other words, the better we can make things, the more money there will be to go to, to everybody. 
So in other words, if, if the first grade teacher, for example, might notice a violent tendency in little Johnny, and they were able to identify it and channel it and work him into a positive situation with that negative energy, yes. that would increase their future reward exponentially. And not just that teacher, but the psychologist or psychologist, the team of psychologists and biologists and so forth and so on, who figure out how to detect these things. Would make, you know, for every time that that technique is used to prevent problems, they again are going to start getting some money for it. So developing something like that, finding a a, uh, a way of dealing with these things that works is going to generate huge amounts of income for the people who figure it out. It's like the uh, you know, Alexander Graham Bell, assuming that he actually did develop the telephone and this good chance that it was really more than one person. But let's say that Alexander Graham Bell did really invent the telephone. Look at all the good works that telephones have made possible over the course of the years since then. So by having done that, he would be enormously wealthy when he died because there'd be so much benefits that were generated by his invention of the telephone. So if you invent something, you can enable teachers to spot these problems early on so that the society can do something about them. That means that the person who invented that technique will make enormous amounts of money. Yes, it does seem like there's unlimited profit potential for certain things. Yes, they have leverage. Uh, in other words, if you take care of a child and teach that child to read, well, you've, you've affected the one child. But if you come up with a better way of teaching children to read, then everybody that uses that better way is working for you, in effect, and themselves at the same time, naturally. Isn't that neat? I kind of like it in, in a lot of aspects. It does, t I, I, I've got to say, I personally am a little nervous about the uh, chain business you know going back and obviously it would have to pretty much start a transition I suppose because you couldn't really let the chain go back to pre-transition events particularly nothing, nothing would go back to pre-transition yeah because it, it would just really be very spotty and difficult to have all the information logged properly from pre-transition pre times even if we had all the information it shouldn't go back before the transition. It should. Everything should start in the, with the free market money at the transition, the moment of transition. Nothing at all should affect how much you get paid from before that. So pretty much the transition constitutes a clean slate. A clean slate, yes. Everybody starts with a clean slate and even those who own no money or property start with a token amount in their account. Uh, at the moment of the transition, there was you know a dollar in, in, in my account, and pardon me, a dollar in my bank account of physical object money would, would presumably become a dollar in my free market money account. And whatever property I owned the instant before the transition, I still own after the, at the instant after the transition. Only I'm now responsible for it all. And oh. people, the, and if you had a loan from a bank, the investors who, who who invested in your mortgage would all get money at the moment of transition when they that were. house officially became yours. Because that was an asset. They owned that asset. The and bank. But well, since the bank would no longer exist, then the, the, the money no goes to the investors who invested in transition, They had the asset. Right. But technically, I mean, right now, the investors of that bank couldn't just come to your home and say, well, I own your home. I want to use it. <laughs> In other words, the invest uh, the now they could foreclose. But after the transition, the house is yours, free and clear. You own it. Exactly. It's yours. 100%. It is your property to do with as you like, so long as you don't hurt anybody else. Now, there's a good question. If you do hurt somebody else, um, what happens then? Say, 
say uh, my house, or I don't want to say my house. Okay, say, uh, say my neighbor next door has a girl chained in his basement and they find out what's going to happen to his property and himself in this system. I don't know. Well, by, what, what would you guess they'd do? I don't know. Obviously, uh, I would say that you could earn money by releasing the girl. Uh, I would say that you could earn money by preventing his putting anybody else locked up in the basement. But as to what is to be done with him, what would be the best thing to be done? Change back what up and it don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, what, what would produce the most benefit and the least harm? Yeah, I, I do suppose an eye for an eye in that case probably would not produce the most benefit. Punishment is one of the stupidest things a society could do. I mean, punishment may make the person doing the punishment feel good briefly. Well, honestly, most I, likely not. I would think that whatever his pun uh, punishment, whatever, it, whatever his, um, uh, whatever the disposition of the situation is, he should make restitution to that girl somehow. Okay, that's uh, that's a um, a possibility, but. How can you possibly make restitution to somebody for having been chained up, for having chained them up in your basement for several years? I mean, I don't see any reason to restitution. Judges would have to get very creative in their sentencing, I think. Well, they should, shouldn't they? I mean, because every case is unique. and every case, the best thing to do, the judge needs to figure out what it is and recommend that. And then other people who trust the judge uh, then have uh, that basis to go on. But that doesn't absolve them of any responsibility for their actions. Like the saying, the judge told me to do it, doesn't mean it was the right thing to do. And do you think in, in the, after transition to this type of economy, we would still have jury trials? Or would it all be just the judge? I don't know what would be best. If you could tell me ahead of time that it's always going to be best to have a jury trial or always going to be best to not have a jury trial, then I could tell you what we'd have. But obviously, uh, I don't know what's going to be best. Now, in the novel, I suggested that you function for a judge and had it play out in, I believe, uh, three cases give some idea of what might be done and to give the idea that uh, there are, you can do things in different ways than we have done them traditionally. But uh, let's put it this way. If a uh, court could find the truth, the jury, then why would we have all these people, why do we have all these people who are on death row who it turns out we're innocent. Exactly. So the idea is not that, uh, you know, well, I've got a jury to protect my rights because they don't. Or I've got an attorney to protect my rights because they don't. Or I've got a judge to make sure things are fair because they don't. The why, why are people so easily convinced that these things work when they don't? Because they're a whole lot better than having the state say, uh, we don't like you, we're going to punish you whether you did anything or not. And that and, is North Korea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can, you can look back at the tyrants through history, and there are plenty of them to select from. Pick you one of your choice. Oh, we're, and, we're down and, to the last seven minutes. I, I wanted to see if Jason had anything he wanted to ask or say before we end the show. Jason, what have you got to say for yourself? Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Um, well, shoot, I, I actually have a uh, but I left my list at home. And I've missed most of this conversation, so I'm sorry that I missed a good 10 minutes there. Uh, um, hey, it's just good let's see, to have anything you. off the top of my head? Sure. Did we lose you? He doesn't seem to be saying anything. I think he might be froze up. Technical difficulties there. Oh, what a shame. I, I didn't mean to put him on the spot and then have him 
I know it's not stage fright. I'm sure it's technical. <laughs> you heard Jason. Your head moved. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I wanted to ask you about uh, Las Vegas. Sure. All right. Do you think that it would become a palm calling under your system, or do you think that it would adapt to the new money somehow? Well, uh, it will adapt to the new money. It, it may very well continue to be a destination for vacation in which they have shows, which they have entertainments, in which you can gamble. But you just can't gamble with money. Now, you can gamble for poker chips. You can gamble for, uh, you know, uh, like you know, we talk about, you know, I lost an election bet. That's why I'm walking this guy down the street in a wheelbarrow. I mean, there are all sorts of ways to gamble that you do not have to gamble for money. But they got great hotels, and I understand that the shows and, and so forth have wonderful acts and lots of good performers. So you'd gamble for objects or for for just fun, but not for money. That's just. Yeah, I mean, like you could you could gamble to win a car, for example, or something maybe. Uh, more likely, uh, you would gamble with poker chips, and you say you lost like uh, thirty-two hundred dollars to somebody else. So you go with them to a luxury shop, and you buy objects for them up to the amount of thirty-two hundred dollars. Hand them over, and then you go back to the hotel and, and wonder what happened, why you bothered to to gamble, but. <laughs> That, that way, again, you're not hurting anybody. Seems to me it would cure the gamblers pretty fast because it sounds like a lot less fun. Yes, it's a lot less convenient. But there's no organized crime involved. And if you lose all your money, it's not going to hurt your family any. I mean, they're, they're going to walk just fine without your money because they're not using your money anyway. It's your money. I mean, it's not I think money it's, causes a lot more family arguments than any other single thing that exists. I mean, after all, you, you, you own your house free and clear, or you're living in a house without having to pay for it. Uh, you get food, clothing, medical care, uh, education. Your kids want to go to graduate school, fine. They, they can go to graduate school. It's not going to cost you anything. It's not going to cost them anything. Do you think a lot more people would send their kids away to boarding school then, since it wouldn't cost them anything? What makes you think that uh, having the kids not be at home wouldn't cost them? That's a positive benefit for a lot of kids. I mean, well, it would be, and that's exactly my point, is that yeah. uh, I would love to send one or more of my kids to places like a boarding school in France to learn to cook or or you know, someplace exotic to learn what they want to know. But that means you're not you're going to lose the income you would have had by taking care of your kids. If somebody else is taking care of your kids for you, they're the ones getting paid. No, oh, well, that, that wouldn't matter if I, if it was if my daughter wants to learn to cook or wants to go to Japan for uh, a year as an exchange student or whatever the case may be, it would be a lot easier to do with this system, especially if the FMM, or the free market money, I'm sorry, non-POM, was initiated worldwide or adopted worldwide. Shall I it say. wouldn't have to be adopted worldwide. We can do it. It would, it would take care of all these problems for you without being adopted worldwide. That I think we're going to have to save for next week because we only have okay. two minutes left. But that 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 is definitely a subject that we should discuss about um, if if one area adopts it and another doesn't, how that's going to affect interaction. Okay, I'd be happy yeah. to. Are you going to be free next week? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, yes. Uh, maybe Jason too. <laughs> we can but hope. And maybe next week he'll remember his list of questions. Let <laughs> me write them on the back of his hand. <laughs> Can't go wrong that way. Whoop! I think he unplugged. No, nope, he did. Right. I didn't unplug. There's his picture of him in his wedding picture. Oh, we lost him again. Oh, he's oh. back. He's you can still hear me. 
yeah. It's because of where I am. It's because of where I am in time and space that I keep coming in and out of reality. So, <laughs> but, uh, We're talking to him from an alternate reality. That's pretty cool. There we go. We're on the George <laughs> Norrie show. <laughs> well, I but, guess we'll all be back here next week, same time, same place. I'll try. Maybe I'll even show my face. <laughs> you guys, enjoy the rest of your evening. It was great talking to you. Bye-bye. You guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. Bye.